I'm, I'm just going to talk about, um, I've been um, collaborating with another artist called Kat Phillips, and she was going to come, she, could, she, she couldn't make it uh, today. So um, you've got the short straw, you've got me, I didn't get her. Anyway, we started working together at the, um, just before the invasion of Iraq. And um, through the collaboration, we've tried to make work that is used in a lot of different contexts. Um, so, the, yeah, we've made work in a lot of different ways. I'm just quickly going to go through, because it, all, all the work we do has been strategies for how you respond to the, um, or how we responded to, to the war in Iraq. And a, lo a lot of it came about through our frustration. You know, we went on the big march, like most of you, and went on other little marches. And then, and then there wasn't activity in between that much. So we used our work, really, to, uh, to sort of explore our anger and sort of hatred of the, of, the, of the bloodshed and what was going on there. So in that sense, I suppose there's that element of therapy in it, you might call it. Um, so this was, the, this, was, this was the first stuff we did, which was based on the idea of a medal. It's a set of uh, prints, and, th and they were quite uh, abstracted. So, um, and they used pictures, like that was a picture from Iraq, and they used dust. And we started working, um, I hadn't actually worked before, but uh, Kat worked with digital. I, I'm still, I was still so old that I used cut and paste and glue, cow gum and scalpels and things like that. We started working digitally and then found that you could break the rules of digital technology, like throw dust all over flatbed scanners, which is what that is, and you get a very gritty, powerful effect. You get a very material, you know, you get a, the, the actual material can be reproduced directly. So, which is what we were looking for, is to find very direct ways of expression. So these are some of those, that, and they, they turned out to be prints. And then um, B is, uh, and, then, and then we um, started working in different ways. Um, this was a, a workshop in, in Norwich, um, which is part of an exhibition. And um, we had a printing press up there and um, we printed posters. Um, we managed to we, we managed to get sponsorship from Hewlett Packard, um, who thought that they could use it as part of their PR, and they realised what we were doing. And of course, we, we, they didn't actually use it. Surprise, surprise! But, but we printed stop anti-war posters through the night, even when we weren't there, on this enormous machine. And um, and then gradually all. The, all the sort of groups in Norwich, the um, anti-war groups, there were a lot around that area, um, is, uh, came in and, and they could get these prints for free. We printed on, always print on newsprint, which you can get free from uh, newspaper printers. Um, and then we made a set of posters called Stop Posters that were, that were put up around by us, other people on the street. And, and started making montages. And as you know, the, the principle of a montage is you bring two things together and you create a third meaning. You, you, you bring together what is usually hidden in, in uh, our society. So here we've got Bush and Blair, and there we've got um, one of the photos that one of the British squaddies actually took, you know, that went on the internet, of them torturing the uh, Iraqis. And um, then we made, we made this image of Blair <coughs> that, um, I'll just go through this bit quicker, uh, yeah. that one, which became, that's hopefully going to become the official image of Tony Blair. Uh, <laughs> we're working on it. In fact, the, 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 the National Portrait Gallery in Scotland has bought it, because they had to buy one of Blair, because he went to public school up in, up in Scotland. They had not actually dared show it yet. But that is the, that is the thing. You know, it's a very simple connection of two pictures. The, the original picture was a PR picture that Blair had taken of him with young squaddies, or young, um, and uh, and it was all set up by New Labour. The picture it was a it was a PR picture, and um, uh, in fact, I did a talk once. A young kid who's expert on mobile phones, I love Mark. He told me that that in fact doesn't take pictures that model. Uh, so even even that part of it was fake. But uh, so so it's got used that was when it was in 
it got, it got, we, we did it, and then nothing, you know, like it was another image. And then it, we, it went into Banks's, he had this thing called Santa's Ghetto in Oxford yeah. Street. Went in the window there, and a lot of, and people sort of, um, sort of started, especially a lot of young people started photographing. People got into very complicated, mimetic things, like they photographed their friends photographing another friend photographing the picture. So it's got that sense of, Involvement in it, and it just seems to, and then and then it went into magazines. This is some of the um, magazines, and then it's that something like that was great because that's the British Medical Journal, and they used it for an article about the National Health Service, which Blair had started to destroy. You know, started what's happening now in earnest. It was obviously started by New Labour, so it is great if an image can be actually taken up and used in different ways and then some advertising man said it was the image of the year a couple of years ago um, and um, that's in the Guardian and then, then Stop the Wars used it quite a few times for conferences and things and then that the arrest prayer unfortunately I haven't succeeded yet but we're working on it um, so yeah so it's been used in a lot of different ways and um, as well as doing that work, we, we've done this sort of work which is very big and rough and uh, tries to uh, communicate through material the, the horrors of Iraq. Obviously it's completely, there's no way of doing that. There's, but it's trying to make the, the actual material not just a flat photographic surface but uh, very rough. So we, we put photos down and bash them up like sort of... Uh, Papier mache, so the pictures explode, and it's got a sort of physicality about it. Um, you can see that's like a detail of it. They're very big things. Um, that's a GI kicking the door in, um, and that's on a on the holding that I think well, that you use yeah, that you use that holding. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so a version of that went on that holding, and that was on a on a gate in Palestine. We went off to. Palestine with a group of artists that Banksy has sort of organised and we got a Palestinian printer to print a, uh, a sticky version that because this guy usually does advertising work and he was really happy to do something that actually had some meaning for him so he stuck it on this door which is the door where they you know Israel's the other side of it um, and uh, on the wall which as you know is, is used a lot and that was another hoarding that was done about that, that that was in London, but it's about the war, and that was one in. Uh, Northern yeah. So the, the hauling, you know, the way it's very different way from what you're using, but it's obviously it's a fantastic form of communication, and this is, I suppose, what we're doing is is traditional. What you're doing is something very new, I think. You know, to actually use it in that way. I mean, in fact, it reminded me a bit. Of, I don't know if you know a guy called Christopher Lowe, who was a great poet. In the yeah, 60s. Yeah, 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 and he did poster poems uh. that went up. Well, they went, didn't go in the street, but they, they, you could buy them, like A2 uh. a, a like poems. Like and they, he did one about why I voted Labour, it was called, and it was full of obscenity. You know, like, it was, it was very strong political oh, stuff he did. Them. Yeah, and they were called poster poems. Um, th this numbering system we devised, this is a bit like sort of John Luke Goddard, he looks a bit like. It was to keep people awake because they wondered what was going to happen down the down the alphabet. Um, this was something we did called the Cafe of Equivalence, and um, we used Financial Times. We print on Financial Times, um, and then set up a, a cafe um, in the city of London. That's Cat who I work with, um, and we gave people soup. But we said the soup was £112 ATP or something, which is the equivalent um, percentage of a banker's salary um, to what someone in, uh, a, a, a woman in Africa <coughs> who's um, trying to feed her family and is using 70% uh, uh, of her income on food. So. I mean, it's quite complicated to explain, but I mean, the idea was to set up a debate with the banking community. And, then, and, we, and we did actually give out soup. We, we didn't actually take any money because we weren't allowed to anyway. It was symbolic. It was a way to explore the contradiction between the poverty of um, 
of most of the world and the, the riches of the city of London. So the images printed on them are of um, poverty from Africa and India and Thailand and different places. And that's me sort of frightening bankers. They, most bankers, they did actually take soup from the cat. They thought I was trying to poison them for some reason. So, but they didn't. And, and that's and it got taken up very strangely by the design museum, who have this thing called 100 Designs of the Year um, international thing. And they took it as a design of the year, this cafe, which was strange, but it was good because it, the place was full of very expensive cars and things like that. And then you got this thing that there's no way anyone could look at it and not see the root of our um, uh, of our sort of capitalism and consumerism, but you know where it all comes from, because that's what we put onto the newspapers. Um, and this was one we used uh, the Chilcot report, which is printed on it. it. Was a series. I won't go into that a bit. But it was a, it was an exhibition of burnt boards with the Chilcot report uh, stuck onto it. So we stayed with the Iraq and tried to find ways to express it. Um, and this is just to show that we, well, when we do exhibitions, we, I mean, this thing is called Art on the Streets thing, but we do, we always do work, try and do workshops. And we did some in, in Glasgow with a group of kids off a, a, from a, a youth club on the estate. And um, uh, you can see some of them there. It was amazing what they did. They had seven hours in the place, and they produced because we had the we had a scanner and we had magazines, and they had all their material on them. They 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 totally got into the idea of making montage of combining stuff that they they were wearing, like some of their they had bits of jewelry and stuff, t-shirt, and then combining that with images from magazines. And actually, it's an amazing way to set up a dialogue. Um, and this was someone that you can see, that's like the guy, how he portrayed himself in the, with imagery. And this was done, as I said, it was only a seven hour, they were brought in a coach and they whizzed around. The energy they had was unbelievable um, in this gallery in, uh, um, and I've forgotten the name of the gallery in Glasgow, isn't it? It's a photographic gallery. Really good, they did a lot of good projects, a couple of ways forward. So that's where we did. And then at the end of the day, we put them up street level. Street level. Yeah, we did a show there, and that, this was. And at the end of the day, we um, we we put them up as placards because they had a laminator there, so we could laminate them. So in one day, they they produced this work, and then it was it was outside the gallery, which was great. I mean, for the you know the the potentials of this new technology in terms of um, workshop things is is, is fantastic. So that's the sort of um, uh, thing I've, I've just done. That, as I say, is trying to. Um, and I think visual languages are so are so important now because I mean, young people read images very, very sophisticated ways, and there's a lot of possibilities for grabbing montage and grabbing images back because we're bom bombarded by millions and millions of this crap advertising everywhere we go, we're, we're being bombarded with this imagery and I, I feel it's very important that we actually use imagery to fight back. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much.